Hello, everybody. How are all my funky jump friends? Hello, 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 hello. How we doing, ladies? Ah, here we go. Um, today is the fun and the exciting take five YouTube takeover hop, whatever you want to call it today. All I know is it's going to be fun and a blast. And I would hope that you guys will all bear with us because this will be the first time a few of us, a few of us have gone live on YouTube. Hello, hello, Miss Painted Peach. There's Miss Mary. So please, please, please be patient with us and make sure that uh, you are subscribing to everyone and um, all that kind of fun jazz. I do have in my description, I have listed everybody that's in the hop today and their channel. And I would love it if you go subscribe to everyone. Um, and uh, just check us out. Just keep hopping from channel to channel. YouTube is a little different for our new followers. Um, so the best thing you can do for us on YouTube is to give us a thumbs up. The way to do that is to close your comments and hit the thumbs up and then come back to comments. So anyway, I am using StreamYard, so I'll be able to see everything that's going on. So you know what? Let's put up a fun little banner up here and talk about some things like, um, let's do this one that I have set up right here. No, let's don't do that one because that's talking about Facebook right there. So none of those. So let's create a banner and let's just call it the Take 5 YouTube Takeover. I mean, why not? So while we're getting ready to uh, see if everyone is on Ad Banner. Right there we go. Boom. Look at that. How much fun is that? How much fun is that? Okay, so any of my friends that are over here from Facebook, make sure you follow Take 5 because we have all kinds of fun stuff going on in there. Um, and if you're on YouTube, could you jump over to um, Facebook and follow that group? That would be great. On Fridays, we do a Friday Friends, and we all... Um, come together and do something fun. We will be doing more YouTube lives and stuff like that. If you're just hopping on, make sure you say hello so I can say hello to you. Okay, you guys, the other day you guys saw my Timu, my Timu, Timu haul. I've had a couple people message me and tell me that they're unfollowing me because I bought some stuff from Timu. I don't know. I didn't know it was going to be an issue, but apparently it is. So anyway, that's okay. So what we're going to do is I pulled out some fall things because we are moving out of Halloween and into fall. I know everybody's doing a lot of Christmas stuff. And in fact, tomorrow I will be in an event that we is we are doing elf type of things. And um, so but I still have a few fall things that I want to make. If we would happen to get done, we'll jump back over to our Halloween book because I'm not quite done with it yet. And Halloween's Tuesday. I need to get busy and get that finished. But I pulled a couple of these rounds out. I bought these from um, Timu. I thought I would try them out and see. They are extremely thin, but you know what? They work. You know, one of the things that I like to tell people is um, every season every year things change. What you absolutely love this year, you might not love next year. So is it okay that these are thin? Yeah. I'm going to hang it on my door for about three or four weeks, take it down, put my Christmas decorations up. You know, I mean, eh, do what you can. Do what you can there. Hello, Deb, and hello, Christy. So I wanted to do these, and I definitely wanted to get this one done because I absolutely love it. And, of course, it has a mushroom and ladybug on it. So we're going to put that on one of these. I was thinking about doing two of them because I was thinking about doing this cornucopia one, um, and I was going to give it to my mom. I actually was going to give both of them to my mom to hang on her cabinets at Thanksgiving. That's where we do our Thanksgiving. So we're going to get started. Now, how am I going to do these? I'm thinking salt wash, right? Who doesn't love salt wash? Everybody loves salt wash. So I'm just going to start with one. 
we'll have the stuff all mixed up to do both. I was going to try to do both, but there's not a whole lot of room on my table here to do both. So we'll just start with one. Now, what salt wash is? Salt wash is an additive to get a sun and salt air soaked look, which means texture. You're going to get a texture and look like something has been around for a long, long time. Colors that I want to use. I think I'm going to use these fall colors right here for sure thinking about adding that in as a little bit of something extra extra maybe even that I don't I don't know should we pull some red in there even um it's a lot of paint it's a lot of colors it's a lot of colors but I love them definitely want we're gonna think I don't know we may use them all <laughs> so I picked out six colors right there so and I pulled out four little cups and I got some big cups here so we got all our cups right here so we got plenty of cups so let's just get started now what we do I need to take the lid off some of those if you turn like you're tightening and pull up at the same time you can get those puppies pulled right off of there other than using your teeth and whatnot now this guy here I had a little trouble so I didn't get him all the way off there's a little chunk there that we could go ahead and possibly pull off we might should have just left it alone there we go Let's see here's another new one every once in a while that doesn't work okay sometimes they're on there so tight that you can't do it but if you just keep working it you can, a lot of times you can get it off just a little hint just a little easy thing to do and like i said it doesn't always work but for the most part it does I'm going to drop you to solo layout on just my table so you can see everything that's going on. And in all actuality, I'm going to take that banner off so you can see everything. Okay, I'm going to just tilt this back just a tish to make sure we got the whole thing in. All right, so let's just get started. Um, let's get started with some paint here. I'm going to start with this color here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paint in my cups here. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit in there. I'm just going to do one at a time. And then I'm going to add some salt wash to it. Now, look at these little baby mini craft sticks I found. Got to use up what we got. So we're going to, that's what we're going to use to stir our stuff. So I don't need a whole lot here because um, I don't have a real big board here. This is just a 12 inch round. Um, I could have cut them out on my laser. I didn't do that because I just thought I would try these from Timu just to see because it is a little bit cheaper. They were a little cheaper there than what I can do as far as cutting them out. By the time I buy the wood and you add in my time that it takes to cut them and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so see how we've made that? I want to get it a little bit thicker so it's got a little bit more chunk to it. But see, I'm just kind of mixing that in. Now, I was watching a video the other day, and the lady put um, salt wash down on her board and then painted over the top of it. I have never tried that. I really honestly don't know how well that would work, but um, it seemed to work for her. Now, I could get a paintbrush out if I wanted to. Oops, let me switch back so I can see comments. Hey, Jeannie Taylor. Jeannie Taylor is up after me, you guys, and she is on her regular page, which is Jeannie Taylor. The link is in my description to go check her out. Make sure you subscribe to her. And Wendy will be on later this evening. She's right there. Um, Christy will be on this afternoon also. Um, so uh, make sure you check all them out. Um, I'm just going to use this. And I'm just going to maybe, I don't know, this is kind of small to get on there. It's too small. It's like be too much work. So I'm going to just sit this guy right over here and I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab me some chippy brushes right here. I thought I might be able to use that just to save so I didn't have to clean this brush. But of course it was kind of, it was just a little too short. So look at that. I'm just going to put some on here. Okay. Da, da, da. easy peasy lemon squeezy i know i say that all the time and i've been trying not to say it so much because it sounds kind of corny but i keep saying it I keep saying it all right so i'm going to save that because we'll be using that on the other let's get some green on here and we'll go a little faster now i'm getting these mixed up right here 
we're just adding chunks and texture of paint on here. If you can see that texture, can you see that texture that I left on there? It's going to be pretty. Now, ideally, when you would want to do this, you would want to um, put it on uh, and let it dry so that it gets dry through and through. But of course, on a live, we can't do that because, um, you know, we only have so much time. So, and there is Miss Melanie. She will also be on later today. So make sure you check all these guys out. And like I said, their descriptions are up in my, um, or their links are up in my description. Check them out and follow them and all that fun jazz. Let's add some blue on here. So we're just picking out some fall colors and who doesn't love the navy blue for fall I, you know i'm thinking the navy blue is the new black i use navy blue a lot um, when i'm stenciling my words and different things like that in a normal circumstance that i would probably use black paint but um because i'm just really liking how it looks and this is such a pretty color of blue it's not too dark but it's not too light either I really like that. I need to grab a couple more chippy brushes right here. A lot of times I just use the same chip brush over and over, but we're, we're going to probably try to do two signs. So, but we'll see. We'll see how this is going to work out. So I may stop at four colors. And like I said, um, I'm going to put these, I'm going to give them to my mom to hang on the door or the cabinet doors for Thanksgiving. So I think we will. I think we'll go here here and here and let's stop it I thought I had another um see that's awful pretty though do 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 I thought I had a pretty like harvest yellow this marigold yellow I think I like it better let's do that and uh, we'll decide if we want to put more colors in or not I don't know you guys just kind of trying to flank here so Yes, this is fun today. Something different. And I'm going to be honest with everybody. Everybody's scared. Everybody's nervous and, and stuff like that. Um, but they really don't need to be. Just do your best. Do your best. That's all we can do. There. I don't know, you guys. Maybe we should add. Okay. See, ideally, also, you would dry each layer so they don't kind of mix together. But, you know, like I said, we're on a live. We do the best that we can, and we just kind of go for it right here. Okay, now what I can do is I can go, like, go back to my, like, orange color and get it pulled up some more. Now, see, my orange is a lot thicker than some of my other colors. I don't want to keep messing with it and cause it to look like a mush, a mushy mess. But I kind of like the way that looks there. Now, you guys are going, what in the devil is she doing? She is just making a complete and total mess. We're going to sit that over there and let that start drying. And we're going to go for putting pretty much the same type of thing on this sign right here. I mean, um, they're both for fall. I'm going to try to use up as much as I can and just to get it out of the way. Now you can wash your brushes or you can toss them in the trash. That is totally up to you. But I usually wash mine out because my chippy brushes, most of the time my chip brushes that I'm using, um, I don't care that they're all crazy and hairy and whatnot. And then um, when they get too bad, we just toss them um, and uh, buy another box of them you know we don't make too big of a deal about it but you can also um trim the ends off um and make it shorter and stuff and then they still work for other things so here we go i don't know you guys i'm kind of thinking i might want to put in a little bit of that aqua just to lighten this up I think I might. I think I might. I'm going to just grab some here. I mean, why, not? why the heck not, right? We got it all out here. See, I'm just thinking I'm thinking I want to put a little bit of this in here. Woo, dumped a bunch of salt wash on that one. <laughs> Some fun stuff. Anybody doing fun things this weekend? I mean, it's trick-or-treating a lot of places. Um... I've got one teenager that wants to go to a 
little get together. I don't know. See, this one's a lot thinner. I made that a lot thinner. So I kind of need to spread it out a little bit, but it'll be just fine. It'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna stop with that one. We're gonna set that one over here. Now look, I use pretty much the same colors, but look how different the two of them look. Now you guys are thinking, this looks ugly, Christy. Just give me a minute. Now I wanna put a little bit of this on here too. Just give me a few minutes. It's always gonna be ugly before it's pretty, right? Isn't that what we always tell ourselves? <laughs> All right, you guys, I am going to, because I probably will not use any more of this paint, I'm just going to go ahead and get my brushes into my water and out of the way. Okay, now we're going to take our hair dryer. This really isn't a hair dryer. It is a heat tool, a craft heat tool, and I'm going to go over this for just a couple minutes and uh, get this cleaned up. You're just crafting and cleaning this weekend. Guys, if you hear the lawnmower, my husband has decided to mow today, and he has decided to mow around the house when I'm live, which is fantastic. So we have five acres to mow. I don't know why we can't like maybe be somewhere else. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but it's been unseasonably warm here in Indiana this week, but it's supposed to drop off pretty cold. And you guys, you know what? Something that is weird. You guys, I'm going to pull myself up here so um, I can talk to you a little bit while we dry this. Um, you know what? Something that's kind of weird. Our porch... The cracks on our porch, you know, where the two pieces of concrete come together, we have the most beautiful grass for some reason growing up through there. What is up with that? We never have grass up through there. We spray it with killer, but it's, we never, we never have a problem with that. I don't know why all of a sudden we have a problem with that. And then in the ditches and stuff where we do kill the stuff, we have the prettiest dark green grass growing up. You don't hear the mowness? Okay. I can hear him. He's right behind. It's like he's right behind me. But um, it's insane. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's it's November almost, you know. But anyway, so we need to get that taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and go over this a little bit right here too. Why we've got the dryer out. So I this weekend. Let's see. I've got to work Saturday and Sunday. I don't have to work. I choose to work. I, I have trouble turning down overtime. That's me. I don't know. I always, I guess it's because when I worked for GM and they closed our plant, I feel like I have to make sure that, um, you know, we've got money in the bank and extra money and all that kind of stuff. So I have a hard time turning down overtime unless I have something planned to do. So I'm working. I didn't go to work. I only worked a little bit last night because, um, I had jury duty this morning was the selection process. Same way with controlled burns, things go back prettier. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, you're absolutely right on that. I can remember when we burnt, when I was a kid and we would uh, burn the fence rows and stuff and the grass would just be so pretty when it would come up through there and my dad would be so bad. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'm working this weekend, but I had jury duty today and it went pretty quickly. It was uh, uh, one of the lower felonies. So they only needed six jurors. They called six up. They dismissed one. They called another one up and then the jury was set. Then they called another guy up and he was the alternate. It went that fast. Still there about an hour and a half, but um, it did go pretty fast. So I didn't get selected for that, which... You know, am I mad? No. Am I sad I didn't get picked? No. Am I happy I didn't get picked? No. I mean, I just feel like, you know, it's our civic duty to do jury duty. So, and I have done it before. Um, let's see, I got some more paint here. Um, I've done it actually twice before. So, um, it really isn't as bad as you think it is. But... So anyway, that was my morning, and then I had to go. Um, then I had to go to um, our uh, insurance agent because we got a bill in the mail. Um, I really want to use a bigger chip brush. Let me grab one real quick. They're just right down here. They have a whole bag of them right here. Let me grab a new one. 
<laughs> but anyway, um, our uh, insurance, we got our insurance bill, and it's the strangest thing. Our insurance bill had um, a different agent's name on it, number one. Number two, it had a trailer that we don't have on there. It was just kind of weird. So I stopped at our insurance agent and um, talked to her. And she's supposed to be getting back with me on figuring out what in the devil's going on. So she pulled everything up and everything's the way we're supposed to be. But for some reason, they added this trailer and it has this new agent on there. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that probably because it was a really strange area code, not one that's around here. Probably they um, transformed some numbers. Transformed some numbers. I'm going to take this white paint on my chippy brush. Let me switch it back so you can see what I'm doing right here. I'm going to take this right here, and I'm just going to go over it. Okay? I'm going to pretty much cover it. Now, one of the things that's kind of neat with salt wash, each layer of paint that you put on, you can, you most definitely can, sand between each layer. I need a lot more paint than that, Christy. Um, you can sand between each layer and it has a different effect than just doing what I'm doing right here. Now you'll notice that I am having a little bit of bleeding because I'm getting that paint wet. But if you remember what I said a little bit ago, if we would um, let this dry and the best thing to do is to paint it the night before and let it get good and dry so that when we sand it and we add this extra paint on here, it um, is all cured and all that kind of stuff. You won't have that problem. But does it bother me that that this paint has a weird smell? Um, does it bother me that it has the bleed through? Absolutely not. Because if you follow me, you know that Christy absolutely positively loves color. And so that doesn't bother me at all at all at all okay so i'm just kind of trying to get out here to the edges and make sure i'm covered um now i also like to do double-sided signs so probably what i'll do is before i give this to my mother i will probably do a christmas sign on the back so then she'll be able to just flip this around i'll drill a couple holes for her to hang it with ribbon and then she can flip it over and christmas will be on the other side but we'll do that on a different day so right now we're going to do a little bit of dry in here like this because we have to stencil on top. Now, a couple things that you can do here. Um, we can take a, um, what are these called? Like something like this. And we can do a little bit of scraping over the top and get some of those colors pulled back up off of there. But do you guys see all of this? I know, I like the paint bleed. I like the paint bleed. I can't help it. Um, you guys see all the wonderful texture that's happening here? I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And like I said, if we would let it dry, let me show you. I have a sign right here. Let me show you this sign right here. Okay. See this one right here? This sign was done with salt wash, but it's smooth. Okay. We put a base coat down. We put some salt wash on just like you saw me do. Okay let it dry sanded it off put another bit of salt wash on sanded it off and then put a top coat on there and sanded it down you still get the weathered look and the textured look but there is absolutely positively see that there is absolutely no texture on this board okay so you can kind of get the same thing but you kind of need to let your um salt wash dry real good because you're just going to fill up your um sanding or your sandpaper with paint now see how mine has all that texture on there so i mean you can just like anything you can there's more than one way to do a lot of things and you get different effects another thing you can do is you can take your little um tongue depressors your craft sticks and stuff and kind of put it on your board and spin it and make some like circles um you don't have to dab it like i did there are so many different ways that you can do fun things with the salt wash it's i mean it's unbelievable the looks and stuff that you can get 
with the um, different ways of doing things. Now, this is kind of dry, but not completely, but I'm gonna sit it over here and we're gonna go ahead and put the white on the top of that, just so that can dry just a few more minutes um, because I don't wanna keep, see that's wet, but that's okay. We're going, to go, we're going for it. I don't wanna keep drying it because also the um, that board is so thin, I don't want to warp that board either. So putting that heat on it will make it warp. Okay, so here we go again. I'm just going to start in the middle here. See that? Now this one will probably, we'll probably put the cornucopia on. So um, I can go maybe a little bit lighter if I wanted to across here like this. Now see, I probably should have carried the salt wash all the way out to the edges you know, which is something I can come back and do, or we can frame this in with something, you know, one of these colors. I mean, you know, the, just gotta let the project talk to you as you're going. You know, there's so many things that you can do and so many ideas and ways to change how you're doing things and stuff. So we'll just let it talk to us as we go and see if we want to add or do anything different. Now, see, I didn't do that one quite as thick with the white. See the differences? See the differences? Okay. So let's sit that over there. I'm going to run the dryer over this one more time so that when we put our stencil on, it's pretty darn dry. It's not going to be perfectly dry, but that's okay. But what I was going to show you with this right here is when it's dry or even when it's wet, okay? If you did not wanna do sandpaper on there, I can take this and I can just kind of skid it across there and pull up some spots. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just kind of pulling some of those little chunks off just so that it comes up in some spots. You see that? Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So cool. So cool. Now see that? But look, I still have tons and tons of texture. See all that texture on there? So pretty. So pretty. Um, let me wipe my, get a piece of paper and wipe my, my little, whatever this thing is called. What is this called? My putty knife, my scraper is the word I'm looking for. And you guys, and I've been talking about this. I've got a rough edge right there. I've got to take that down and sand that off. I just haven't done it. Okay, so now we've taken some of that paint off. You see how pretty that is? I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Now, if you're wanting some salt wash, um, I love saltwash.com is where you can get it. You can also get it on Amazon. There are, I have friends that have affiliate links and things like that. Um, my friend Melissa at Junk and Craft Treasures is who I would highly recommend if you wanted to buy some through her, but you can get it on Amazon. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's pretty much the same price no matter where you get it. So you're not going to save any going to Amazon and you're not going to uh, pay more using my friend. And, you know, then she probably gets a little bit. I don't know how it works for sure, but um, I'm sure she gets a little bit of commission on that. Okay, so now let's pull this puppy out of here. I've been wanting to do this for a minute. I'm loving it. It says, hello fall. It's got the sunflowers. It's got some pumpkins. And it has this fancy dancy mushroom down here. And right here are our dots for our ladybug. See the ladybug right there? Fun stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to put this on here. Does it fit perfectly? Absolutely not. If something fit perfectly on a board what, that I was doing, I would be shocked <laughs> because I never pull out the boards of the size that they tell us that we're supposed to use. Christy always wants to be a little different, I guess, but that's just me. Okay, so we're just gonna start. I'm gonna kind of use the same colors on this um, as far as it goes. Now, I'm not gonna get crazy and worry about the fact that I could go through and tape a bunch of spots off doo, 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 if I wanted to. Christy's not, I, you know, I'm talking to my, about myself in the third person, but I am not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about that at all. Okay, so I'm going to pull some stencil brushes out here, and I want to give a little plug right here. That first of all, I just dropped some. 
Central Stencil for this month has a set of pink brushes that 100% of the profits go to breast cancer awareness. Um, if you're interested in getting the um, pink ended stencil brushes, you can use my link and save 10% by saying funky junk. Okay. They are a little bit different than their older brushes. They're kind of softer, so the paint should come off a little bit easier. Um, but also today on Essential Stencils, there is a 35% off of a bunch of stuff on their page. Hey, Marsha, a whole bunch of stuff. And then at checkout, you can always use um, my link and save a little bit of extra 10% more by using that. There And there are, there's a section on there of some of their Christmas stencils from last year and um, some of their other stuff that has, uh, you know, there's a set of stencils on there for $4.99. You know, so they're clearing out some of their inventory to make way for the new stuff. So um, they're having a little special today and tomorrow. And again, like I said, you can save more by using um, Funky Junk. Or if you have a favorite ambassador, use their code um, to save some money to get you some, um, some stencils. Okay, so I put that on there with the yellow. Okay, now let's look. Okay, that shows up pretty good. See that? Sometimes yellow, you guys. Sometimes when we get our yellows, they don't want to show up real good. Um, and... Uh, the lighter colors like that. I'm just using the same stencil brush unless I see more yellow anywhere. I don't think so. If I do, we'll just get another brush out. Going straight over here into the green. I'm making sure that my stencil brush looks fairly dry. Now my leaf is going to come off there a little bit, but that's all right. But um, do, do, do. sometimes in this light, it's hard to see exactly where stuff is especially white on white but right there we go look at that pretty pretty now let's grab some brown now this brown hasn't been open so i'm going to spin around and i'm going to get a brown that has been open because i have six six bottles of brown over there that are um half full and half not full so let's do let's get the Let's get what we've got open. I need to start putting a date on them so that I know um, when I opened them and then that way we can uh, um, use them first. I need to use what's open first is what I need to do. Now, see, I'm just going over the brown right here to the centers of our, uh, our sunflowers right there. There's teeny little dots there. I don't, it doesn't bother me that I kind of went up into the yellow. In fact, we're going to grab some orange right here. We're going to grab us another brush. Now look, I let that sit in a thing sideways, but it'll work. Okay. Now I get crazy on my plates and I end up with paint all over the place. So um, I may end up having to pull another one out. I just dump my thing. But a lot of times too, if you take a, uh, paper towel there and get most of that paint off that helps too I'm just going to kind of go around because just to make the sunflowers stand out just a little bit more just like that let's see what that looks like I'm going to keep my hand here and pull this up and see what that looks like see I just kind of gave them just a little bit of texture not a lot but a little bit okay now I like this orange do I like this orange or do I want to use dark blue in the middle for the hello fall i think i might want to use the hello fall um that let's do our picket fence let's do our fence this brown and i'm just taking this same old brush right here it's got some of the orange on it too i'm okay with that and let's just start doing our fence now our fence it's not going to bother me in the least bit for my fence to have a little bit of the paints showing through um from the background, you know what I, oh, didn't want to do the ladybug. It's okay, we can fix her in a minute. Um, so that's not gonna bother me at all because it'll just make my picket fence look like it's it's a little worn too. Now see, I was torn, I was really torn. I was thinking, should we just do the whole thing with salt wash or should I just do, um, like my picket fence and use salt wash on it. I couldn't decide. Can you see what that looks like? Now you see I got my my um 
I'll fix him. Don't worry. I know you guys are panicking. You've messed up your ladybug. Now I've got my stems of my pumpkins. We'll go ahead and grab those while we're right here and get them. If we want to add another color to them, we can. I'm just going to go there. I'm going to grab just a tish more paint. I don't need a lot because I don't have a lot to go over here. Okay. So right like that. Now we're always talking about how you want to use a smooth surface when you're stenciling. And if you're just starting out, you definitely want a smooth surface because you can get a little bit of bleed through because it's not flat. But um, when you're doing something like this, I keep hearing him turn the corner. Um, when you're doing something like this that already has a crazy background, you're not going to see that stuff. So it's going to be okay. Now we have our little stem right here, our little um, stem to our uh, mushroom. And I kind of want it brown, but I think I want it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with the brown like this, okay? And then I'm going to grab just a little bit of that yellow right here. And I'm doing it right on top of the brown like that. And we're just going to hit that too. So it'll kind of give it a little bit of a different color to it. I'm going to go back and grab some brown because I got quite a bit of yellow over here on my fence thing. See, I'm just going to go back over the top of it. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. So, okay. So let's look and see what we got so far. How we looking? So that kind of looks like a stem of a mushroom, doesn't it? I think it looks kind of cool. Okay, so let's set our stencil brushes down right here. And look, I've got two brown stencil brushes. Nuts. I'm nuts. Okay, so I want to grab some red. Where did I set my red? I know I had the red out here because it was my, there it is. It's my favorite, my barn red. I love this color. It's not red red and it's not um, um, burgundy either. It's actually like a barn red. Now see, I'm just gonna, we wanna work our paint up into our bristles. We don't want it just sitting on the end, but we also don't want the paint to be real thick. We want it to be thin, thin is best. You can always go back over your project um, uh, multiple times than to try to do it all at one time. Now look at that. Let's see. I want to see what that looks like. Looks pretty good right there. We'll put some black in the middle and some black up there and do that. Okay, so I think I want my mushroom to be red too. So I'm just going to kind of go over here with the mushroom like that. And we'll just lift this up and see if we're liking what that looks like. Okay, see how it just kind of blends in there. I like that. Now there's a little bit of bleed through. But that's okay. Nobody's going to notice that kind of thing. Okay, let's jump down here to our pumpkins. Now, I definitely want to use my pumpkins, this harvest orange right here. Yep, that's the color I had. I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this brush that I had the red on, and we're just going to kind of mix it up there. All right, we're going to take that off. And I'm going to get my pumpkins down here like this. Now, we may end up putting more colors on our pumpkins to give them a little more dimension. Um, we'll just have to see what they look like when they come, when we pull our thing up here. Okay. So one thing I do know I want to do is I want to go back to my brown that I had right here. Okay. And my stems, I kind of want that brown to kind of come down into my... Um, pumpkin there and see I'm just going to kind of do, 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 do just a little bit just to give it a little bit of more texture look to it all right and then we're going to leave that alone okay so now what do we need to do we need to put some black on here um, just a tish of black now I'm going to pull out a stencil brush that is not from essential stencil it is just a little little guy I have this one. I think we might use this one. Actually, this isn't even a stencil brush, but see how those are stiff? And as you're listening while you're trying, I know, I lose everything. And look, I mean, I have a, I've just, I cleared this off and it's already filled up. But I'm gonna use that so that I can get in here and in here, okay? That's what I wanted to use the, um, 
littler brush for. Now I'm going to pull out my black paint here. Don't ever open your paint over your project because look, you get all these little dried pieces and then they're everywhere. So I'm just going to grab a tissue black. I don't need very much. See how little I put on there? I'm just going to come right over here. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. But I want to get my ladybug head here and his little antennas just like that. See that? Little thing here. Now I'm going to put this right here so I don't go over onto the red. Right there. Okay, grab a little more paint. Just a little tiny bit more, not a whole lot. Just really want it to stand out, right, like that. Now I got a little bit over into the red, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, we still need to do the Hello Fall, and I wanted to do it in the um, navy blue, but I'm going to pull this off, and we'll do it here in a second. See how we've got so far? Not too bad. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, let's lay this back down. How are we doing on time? We're doing fantastic on time. I'll lay that back down. I kind of want, I think I want my lady back. I thought I wanted it that far in red but I'm thinking that I might want a little bit redder red. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna change the mushroom down here because I like how the mushroom looks. All right, but I think I want a little bit redder of a red, maybe. There, just a tish, don't need a lot. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this funky little brush I've got right here, okay? See, this red to me looks almost orange, but um, I think it'll be okay over that other red, okay? So I'm just going to kind of dab that in there. The other thing you can do is use makeup wedges um, when you stencil. Um, those work real well, and you can control a little bit better on what you got going on into little areas like this. You know, okay, I like that a little bit better. What do you guys think? Let's flip this up and look. Looks more ladybuggy. Looks more ladybuggy. Kind of want some dimension down here. Okay, I'm not, I'm just gonna, I don't know. I want something more in this, maybe some green. I just feel like I, I need more. Oh, that was way too much. Maybe underneath a little bit of the green. Okay, I just, I feel like I need more going on there. Now, I messed it up, but don't panic. Nobody panic. I'm going to fix it. I'm just going to kind of go back over with the red a little bit, like that. Let's look that up and see what that looks like. Mm, kind of blends with the um, fence now. I'm going to let it dry, and we'll work on it some more. But until then, let's put that away. Okay, so now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to come over here. And if you notice on my stencils, there is a ladybug. See it? So you can line this right up with your existing ladybug. And that way you know that your little dots are going to be in the right spot. Okay, so I'm just going to take some more black here, kind of dab it off there. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stipple. Do, 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 do. I kind of want to make sure that they're all covered, but I'm just trying to be a little bit careful because this is not really a stencil brush. And you want a stiff stencil brush when you're doing stuff like that. But there's our little ladybug. Isn't he cute? So cute. Now I'm gonna take my dryer. I'm gonna dry this because I think we're gonna add some yellow on the top of that to get it a little bit. Um, little more con contrast with my fence there and then we still got to put the hello fall in the middle but I'm kind of liking how this is looking you guys we might even want to add a little bit of yellow yellowish colors down in there so let's sit this right here so I'm just relining it right back up very simply so let's take let's get us another brush I don't want one that big um, let me reach over here and get another small one. And we're going to go into this golden color right here. Okay, and I want my brush to be super dry. Super duper dry here. Okay.
okay? Because I'm just gonna kind of, I'm, I'm not gonna put a whole bunch, I'm just adding just a little bit of color with that orange on these pumpkins to give them a little contrast. Now you could go through on all of this and, um, you know, get your little detail brush out and make some kind of funky details and stuff. Um, that's just not me. Okay, so I wanna go over this, but I don't want it to turn into a mucky color. But I think going with that little bit of yellow on top will uh, make my, or whatever this is, mushrooms stand out a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, that looks a little bit better, I think. We'll go along there, just like that. Okay, see now you now you can really see the definition of um, that uh, mushroom. Okay, so I'm going to sit this back down, and we're going to go through, and we're going to get this Hello Fall. And like I said, I want to use this dark blue. Um, what I should probably do is put this over here, spin this plate around, and let's put a little bit of dark blue right there. We don't need a whole lot. Definitely don't need a whole lot. I'm just going to put it on my brush. Way too much. I'm going to work it up into the bristles. See how it's still super shiny? We don't want that, okay? So that's why we take our rag and we kind of get most of that off. That will definitely help with your bleed through. Okay. Just gonna go along here. Now I used a lot of the colors that are underneath. So then it pulls all of this together. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Let's see what's happening here. Kind of like it. What do you guys think? Try the brighter red maybe. Yeah, on the mushroom. Should I add a little more red, do you think? Brighter red. Let me see. Let me grab some of that. Just a tish, maybe. pulls it out a little bit more. That looks kind of cool. Okay, so looky there. Fun, fun little project. See that? Now I want to show you. See right here? There's just a tissue of bleed through right there. But with all this texture, you can't really see it. And you can see how dark my paint is right here. So I had just dipped in my paint and I didn't clean it off very good. But with all this texture, you're not going to see that. Now, if you were doing a project that you needed to make sure that came off, all you got to do is take you a little um, X-Acto knife and just kind of wipe across there and it'll come right off. Not a big deal. Now, I want to frame this in, okay? I want to make so that when you look at it, it comes, you look right at what the picture is. So I'm going to take this blue and we're going to go right along this outside edge. Okay, I'm going to do half of it and I'm going to show you what I mean about how it just pulls it all in. And the reason I'm using the dark blue is because of the Hello Fall. Now, when you look at this, you're gonna see it. And Okay, so see how on this side, if you're just looking at this half of it, boom, you're kind of pulled into the center. It just kind of finishes it and puts a frame on it. That's why you hang your pictures and have frames around them because it makes you see the focal point on the center. Whereas when you're over here, your eye kind of wanders a little bit. So that's why I like to frame in all of my projects. A lot of times I use black. A lot of times I just use uh, like a brown color. Um, but I'm, I'm going to say really, actually, I'm telling fibs here. Most of the time I use one of the colors that were that's on my board. So, but like I said, I'm thinking that blue is the new black anyway. So isn't that pretty? I think that turned out really, really pretty. And look at all the, I mean, look at the yummy texture on there and stuff. Let me get it up in the camera. Can you guys see all that? See how it's not smooth and stuff is sticking up everywhere. See that? I just, I, me, I love that. That makes me happy. That makes my heart smile. That makes my brain smile. All the above. And like I said, we'll do a Christmas thing on here. I'll drill a couple holes in here. My mom can hang this on her cabinet for Thanksgiving. 
I mean, I know it says fall, but it's still Thanksgiving. And then she could flip it over for Christmas. So we'll probably make more than just this one. We'll probably do a couple of them. So let's pull this puppy out right here and let's see how much time we've got. Um, we've got about 10 minutes still pretty wet so let's take the dryer but what is cool look at this stencil right here this cornucopia stencil look at all the fun things now if you look at it it's just the um pumpkin right there but you it comes with all of this to put down there with it and you, you got grapes and all that kind of fun stuff so let's see if we can get this dry enough to at least start on it um, and then I can finish it later and uh, give you guys a picture of it. Now, see this mess I have up here of stencil brushes while we're talking? Do not do that. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. I, this is my thing. I love stenciling. Um, I love using different textures and different backgrounds on things. That's the stuff that I really like. I have a child coming up. Um, Oh, no, it's my husband. So, thought it was my granddaughter. She should be getting home from the bus here pretty soon. But here we go. That's probably good enough. That's good enough to get us started. Okay. So, up after me is Jeannie from Jeannie's Palette. Her link is in my description to go subscribe to her channel. So um, make sure you jump over there and see what Jeannie has for us. I am positive that that lady's going to have something absolutely amazing over there to share with us. So um, make sure you go check her out. Now I'm going to take this. I've used up most of this paint. I'm actually going to sit it over there. I'm going to grab me another plate because I've just overdone it a little bit. And let's grab some brown and let's get let's get started let's start getting this done we might be able to get most of this on here oh look there's a there's a paint booger in my paint right here there we go there we go okay so just pulled that out now i'm just going to grab one of these brushes oh what i was going to say was see i have all these paint brushes and stuff sitting here don't do what i do if you're going to keep using them because they will get hard and they will dry up sitting there um, the best thing to do is put them in a baggie with maybe a wet paper towel just barely wet or something like that um, don't just leave them sitting around i have a very bad habit of doing that and like i always tell people do as i say not as i do because um sometimes you can't get you you can't get it softened up good enough to um go again but sometimes you can so i'm just going to go over this whole thing here we might need to add some contrasting colors to make it really pop but we're going to see we're going to see see how it looks so we've got our cornucopia comes clear around here you know what let's look at this picture yeah they do those in brown too they do these lines in the brown along here and we'll get our stem to our pumpkin on here also, just like this, right here. Okay, now we can get this, you know, you can stencil darker and lighter to help with getting a little bit of your contrast if you want to. Um, it's up to you how you wanna figure out to do that. Let's see how that looks so cool now we have some wheat over here now our wheat i'm thinking we want to be this yellow color right here which is called marigold now let me show you since we are we have well maybe i can show you oh my goodness where did they go where oh where oh where did they go i have a bunch of these open already but we'll just open another one I'm going to take a makeup wedge right here, and we can use um, a makeup wedge to do those, that wheat. Now, 
the reason that I decided that I wanted to do that is because look, I can get right up to the edge of my cornucopia there. I don't have to, let's see, my stencil's not flat, but there we go. I don't have to cover it up, but see how I can just really get right up in there, which a lot of times you can't do with a brush. So you can always do um, the makeup wedges for these or like I said, the stencil brushes. I absolutely love my stencil brushes, but sometimes there's a need to use a makeup wedge. There we go. Okay. So now let's jump over to the orange for our pumpkin right here. Do I have a brush that already has a little bit of orange? This one has yellow on it, but we'll use it. Let me just go over it with the orange. Now see what I can do is I can take this and put it here so I don't get up into the wheat. You can also use tape and tape off the sections that you don't want to get with your stencil um, or with your stencil brush and with your paint. It's personal preference there. Now see my the blue right down here was not completely dry and I kind of in the blue there. See, I kind of smeared it a little bit, but that's okay. What we can do if it bothers us that our pumpkin looks a little crazy right there, what we can do is we can um, wait till it gets good and dry and go back over it. Now look, right up here are the back humps of the pumpkin and I did not get those. I painted them brown. So I'm just going to kind of uh, get in there a little bit. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of orange up on my stem, not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back in with my brown, just, just a little. And I'm just going to have it kind of come down onto the pumpkin right there. Okay, I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to look pretty good. Let's pull that off. Okay, now you can't see the wheat real well. You can up here in the camera but I don't see it real well when I look straight down on it. The way you can fix that if you want to is do it white and then go over it with the um, yellow and that'll make your yellow pop a little bit more, okay? So now let's pull this guy out and let's look at this and decide the colors of the things that we wanna put on there. I'm gonna sit that picture right there because I like the colors that they used. Sit my stuff down here, okay? Now, Let's see what we can do right here. It looks like um, right over here is where she put the corn. Um, right here. So let's just put a chunk of corn. It needs to kind of go under the pumpkin, which we didn't do. But that's okay because we can go ahead and stencil it and then what we can do is we can go back over it Let me just use that makeup wedge again watch I'm gonna cut this off if I can get my scissors but I can take the, the pumpkin stencil and put it back over the top and then um, it'll uh, it'll be on top you get what I mean just put the stencil back down and then um, you can use it that way okay so right here let me grab my little paper here I don't want to get up into my corn right there and I'm just kind of going over with the um, with the green now if I do this and it doesn't bother me that um, the pumpkin is behind the corn then don't worry about it right right okay there we go. We've got, it comes clear up over here. So see that? And then right here. Just like that. Okay. Now see how we got our corn on there? Looks pretty. We could do another layer if we needed to. Now look, I can take my yellow, even though I cut it, okay, I can still use it. It's just a little bit smaller is all. And I can dab it on my corn. My corn on the cob. Love corn on the cob. I haven't had, I think we only had it one time this summer. And that was at the fair. 
you know, roasted corn. You just go up. Well, I'm from Indiana. I'm assuming that's normal everywhere. You just go up and you get a ear of corn and you're eating it on the stick and what whatnot right there. Okay, now see, there's my corn right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up putting uh, more of all these little fruits and these nuts and things like that. So I'll finish that later and we will, um, well, I'll finish it when I get off here really, and I will share what that looks like. But let's talk about this right here. We did get this project finished, but I wanted to show you, you could do a couple projects at the same time, especially if you're kind of doing them that they, excuse me, that they kind of go together. Okay, so we did this right here. We used our salt wash and did our fun colors in the back, covered it in white, and then we put our stencil on top. And uh, this is the end result of that. I'm gonna put a couple holes in that and probably hang it on a kitchen counter. Um, today we are doing a take five um, YouTube takeover. The best way to clean your stencil brushes, I use Dawn dishwashing liquid um, or even that Dawn spray. Um, and I, let me pull myself back up here. And what I do is um, I rinse it. I put some soap in my hand and then I just work it up in there, rinse it off, shake it off, get some new until I get it clean. Now, obviously paint is always going to stain your paint brushes. You can't get that off. Now, what I also like to do is about once a month or every other month, I use that master's brush cleaner and conditioner, and that really gets them clean and it conditions your brush. You should do that with all your paint brushes because it just keeps them and makes them stay nice. When I dry them, I hang them like this because I don't want the water to run through there. Um, and turn the, I don't have any here, but I've got a few of them. Um, you don't want it to run on the wood because then that weakens this. So I hang mine upside down like that. So, but that's how I clean them. I just use Dawn dishwashing liquid. You could also put a little bit of awesome on there if you wanted to, um, or that Dawn power wash works real good too. But that's how I clean my brushes. Um, but anyway, go check out Jeannie from Jeannie's Palette. She is just go subscribe to her page or her channel and make sure you give her a thumbs up. And you guys, I will see you guys next time. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and even better tomorrow. Bye-bye, ladies. I didn't mean to just like stand here.